Hi guys, let's have a look at how to merge two images together with a transparent gradient using Affinity Photo on the iPad in this case. This is something like using a double exposure. So let's get right into it. To begin, create a new image base. So we're going to start with the Stock Studio. Create a new project, select the default 6x4 landscape template. They're in Photos, 6x4 comes up naturally. This is a standard photo size and easy to work with. It's quite large when it comes up on the iPad, so pinch it in so you can see it all. I like to be able to see the entire worksheet that I'm working with. Now we need to load the first image. I'm just going to use a desert image from the stock studio. So look for desert in Pixabay and you'll find the one I used. Resize the image to be the same as the template, or as near as you can get to it, in fact. Now, this is how you do it. Select the anchor point at the bottom of the Transform Studio, and place the dot in the centre of that square. Next, lock, set the lock between the width and height to on. You can see the width and height there, and the lock is on. Now, carefully draw down across the width setting, to reduce the image size so it's a near fit to the canvas. It doesn't matter if it's a little outsized. Now reduce the whole canvas in size by pinching it in so you can clearly see the boundaries. Again this makes it really easy to work with. Now we can locate our second image. I'm still using Pixabay and I just went looking for a mosque. This time, finding a suitable image to merge with our first image. As you can see, it's much too big, so we drew, reduce it the same way as before. Go to the Transform Studio and tick the boxes and reduce the size, adjusting the width and height to suit. Now, it's much wider, but we only want that bit anyway. Don't forget, you can move that um, blue outline there, any direction you like to get the exact part of the photo that you want. Now let's check the layers for confirmation. So we're back to the layer panel and you can see both layers there, the mosque above the sand and that's just where we want it. Now select the top image. We're going to set the transparency of this top layer. Now select the Fill tool. I know it's an odd name for this tool, but that's what we need, and it's right there. The red arrow pointing to it. When you select the Fill tool, making sure to start with the default colours, etc., the image will automatically become a grey colour. The Context toolbar will also appear, and you then need to set the type to Linear. Don't need to change anything else at this stage. Later on, if you want to experiment, feel free. But we've got a linear um, bar across the image. If you've set the if you've still got the image selected, that linear bar might actually be from the very edge of the image size to the very edge of the image size on the right hand side. Just bring in the dots to the edge of the image on the canvas, otherwise it'll be too big. You probably know how to do that by now. Now select the left control dot. Go to the color wheel tool and set the transparency to zero. And you can see it there just below the color wheel. I've set the left hand side to zero. So there's no color there at all. You can see the lower image now showing clearly through. But we still have that gray color. We'll change that, shall we? because you don't want it grey, you actually want it to complement the image that's below it. So to start with, go to Layers and deselect the faded layer that you're working on. That's that top layer. Select the Colour Picker Eyedropper. And in the desert picture, pick an appropriate colour. Do not apply it. Not yet. Just leave it selected. The colour picker dot will change to the colour you've selected. That's fine, that's what you want. Just leave it like that. And you can see there that I didn't actually select the bottom layer and unselect the top one. There's enough desert showing there and that's the colour I wanted. 
So I just used the colour picker tool to show that part of the desert. So I've got the desert colour. You might have a more complex photo you're working with and you don't want the colour that's visible. You want the colour that's below the, uh, the part that's not faded. So now we can get creative. Enable the transparent layer again and select it. Select the right side control dot. Then tap the color picker control dot. The default gray will change to the selected color more in keeping with the other image. And you can see it's quite strong there even up in the sky. But we can work on that. And that's just about it really. Notice the control position is still halfway. We can alter that. Let's move it to the right a little. So the transparency uh, moves to the right. You might like it the way it is, but you can move it to the right. Or you can move it to the left, in fact. Let's move to the right a little. And you can see the difference it made. In fact, it's up to you at this point how you set the transparency. You could even change it from linear to radial and have the image focused on the inside and vignette to the outside. It's up to you. But that's how you do it. So thanks for watching. I hope you've gained some ideas and insights for creating your own work in Affinity Photo. And I hope I've made this process a little clearer for you. Please share the video with friends if you like the idea. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. We all like to share, don't we?